Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Solo Round with Eddie. Today's topic is my level of happiness with my Xbox One. Well, overall, I'm a pretty happy dude. So, I mean, it's got to be pretty bad for it to be bad. Um, I'll admit, I was... Uh, I was a little early to the game. I, I picked up a day one Xbox One. Um, I was a huge 360 fan. Uh, I, I mean, a little disclaimer. I'm not a, I wasn't a huge uh, PlayStation 3 fan, so I didn't think that um, I'd be that much in, more interested in the PlayStation 4. And it's kind of the same case. I mean, it does have like two games that kind of had my attention on the PS4 for... A little while but um if uh if it's multi-plat i'm playing on the on the xbox one and that's mainly because that's where all my friends play so i i mean i i had a lot of friends that played on ps3 and that's the reason why i ended up with the ps3 was to play some competitive call of duty and some other i guess rando games but um i always kept coming back to xbox because all of my internet friends are on on the xbox so yeah, my level of happiness at the moment, I guess it's pretty good. I, I don't really have anything to complain about the console, really, um, as far as games go. And that's my main concern. But when it when I get down to it and I got to nitpick it or whatever, um, between... I mean, I'll make a separate video for the PS4. That's a whole video in itself. But for Xbox One, I would... I guess let's start nitpicking it. Because <laughs> uh, I asked myself the other day like what is my level of happiness with the xbox one first off it's it was very expensive it's 500 dollars, and it was bundled in with the connect which i thought was bs because i don't have any faith in, in connect like it's just a gimmick it's kind of the same with mo motion controls video games are meant to be played with a keyboard and mouse or controller in my opinion um but, you know, cool video game experiences can be played on, you know, with motion controls and uh, VR. Uh, I'm not a huge VR fan, but I think that, um, I think it would be cool to have VR as like a, <clears throat> you know, how they have like internet cafes and stuff and you can go in and, and play like, um, I don't I don't know if they're like, I'm pretty sure they're global, but like we used to have a place local that was, I think it was called The Hive and you can go in there and play, a lot of people were playing Counter-Strike, but you can pretty much play whatever PC game um, out there and, and just pay by the hour. I think it'd be really cool. I think uh, VR will be successful in that kind of market. I don't think it'll be good for home. So, But I, I should probably make a video about that uh, or something. Maybe I'll talk about it in the podcast with some friends. But um, the HoloLens for the Xbox sounds pretty cool, I guess. But then again, I'll talk about that one. <laughs> In another video um, but the video games the video games the all the games that are for the Xbox one I super enjoy um, you know Halo uh, the Master Chief collection uh, even though that was a disaster <clears throat> I'm not a multiplayer fan anymore or like a multiplayer player of uh, Halo anymore so I mean it sucked that it didn't work and it should have worked right out the gate and that was a huge fail on uh, on their part. Uh, was it Bungie's fault or Microsoft's fault or whoever's fault it was? Really, um, you know that was definitely a an extra bruise, an unnecessary bruise on the on the old logo. So you know a definite a definite kick while or <laughs> a self inflicted kick while the Xbox One was down. Um, you know, Xbox got a lot of hate for um, always being online. Uh, what else? Not being able to share games with friends. The forced connect. Um, a lot of these, a lot of those things that uh, Microsoft ultimately went back on the word on. Um, I think it would have been cool to see them go forward with those ideas. I think it would have been cool to see how they played out. I don't necessarily agree with what, with what they were doing, but I would have liked to have seen what would have happened if they had gone through with it. Um, but at the same time, it's like, I feel like it wasn't gamers putting out this piece of hardware. I mean, it's a corporate, it's a business and it's corporate. And I understand there's a lot of co corporate voices that 
get what they want because they're paying the bills and so they wanted this gaming console to be an entertaining console or whatever whatever the hell they were thinking when they decided that they wanted to announce it as a entertainment console centerpiece of your of your living room um it i mean it just sounded bad even i'm saying it now and it kind of sounds bad but i think it would have been really cool to see what would have happened with you know the drm and um not being able to I guess I mean, you, you could always share games, but you'd have to log into somebody's account and do all that stuff to, to share. Um, it was definitely a jab at the uh, the resell market, you know, to, to like not be able to uh, to sell your used games, which um, I think it will happen eventually. I mean, I think it's a little too soon, but it'll happen. There 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 will be a a mar- There is already a marketplace. Everybody, I prefer to download now. Um, but more recently, because my my console isn't reading discs anymore, so I don't really feel like returning it. I don't think I can. I've had it for two years, so but I have no problem just downloading games. I, I don't have any intentions of buying physical copies anymore, just because I don't want to lug them around. I mean, I don't ever plan on moving again, at least not for 30 years or 25 years, whatever it is. I don't want to sell my house. <laughs> uh, but... I guess uh, other than that, the features, um, I think they have to improve on uh, the OS. Uh, we're supposed to be getting an OS uh, update, which will allow you to connect to, um, is it Windows 10? Or it's going to be like the same operating system as Windows 10, but for the Xbox One. I watched the conference. There was nothing about it that really struck my fancy, so I didn't really care to remember it. <laughs> Um, I don't know, maybe I'll include some links in the description, inform yourself, I'll inform myself, um, which I should have done before I made this video, but, <laughs> uh, I guess it's just not my style. Uh, the messaging, uh, I mean, a lot of the things that I wish worked on the console are all pretty much solved with smart glass, uh, like the messaging, like, I feel like they just didn't focus on the messaging for, um, the console like when you're replying to a message it's like everything is so slow and i guess their answer to that was the smart glass which you know you could reply to messages um, purchase things um, but one of the main things that really bothers me still is that whenever you're using the snap feature it uh it's really chuggy if you're trying to snap in, in between things, including messaging, and that's one of the reasons why I think that the messaging is really kind of crappy. And whenever you're joining a, a party or anything like that, it's very chuggy, uh, especially if you're doing like Skype. If you're trying to join a Skype call, you, by the way, using Skype on your Xbox One is pretty fluid if you're just using Skype, but don't try to play a game and, and use Skype at the same time because it'll take like five minutes for Skype to freaking load. So, I mean, there are, I, there are little things. There are all the accessories that are supposed to make the console great that are just kind of making the console kind of meh. I mean, for $350, I mean, it's cheaper than the PS4, and the, and the PS4 doesn't offer any of those kind of features. So, I guess it's not that big of a loss, but, you know, it sucks, like, having something that doesn't work. That's the bad part about it. And, and it's not that it doesn't work. It just doesn't work good. But, it's, I mean... It not working good is, is I think, worse than not having it at all. So I think that's why a lot of people like the PS4 so much. And that's why I like the interface for the PS4 because it's there's nothing to it. It's very simple. It's very easy. Everything is very fast and fluid. And um, I think that's just something that the Xbox One kind of lacks at the moment. It is something that could be fixed with updates. Um, I don't know if it's something that could be completely fixed because of a hardware kind of like limitation. Uh, but... It'd be cool if it could be like all the way fixed because I love my Xbox One. I like I prefer to play it over the PS4. I'm I'm probably biased because I just prefer Xbox games, and so I, I naturally just spend a lot more time on on uh, on the Xbox One. Um, you know, I mean there are there are some other perks. I mean there are a lot more exclusive. There are well, I don't want to say a lot, but. There are quite a few more games right now, especially exclusive games to the Xbox One than there are the PS4. And that's, I mean, I 
in general, I don't like the idea of games being exclusive to any console from a customer standpoint. But I understand like that's kind of the nature of business. You, you know, you need to draw people in to, to make a choice between a console. And if you're not fortunate enough to be able to have both, yeah, one side usually wins. Um, but I mean, that's that's just life. You know, not everybody can win. Um, hopefully one day most games will just be cross-platform and you won't have to make that choice. You could just play on whatever console you choose. Um, you know, but then again, what would be the reason of having two companies making hardware <laughs> so of course they have to have their own exclusive features or titles or whatever um xbox one or xbox live is still better than psn i mean hands down i don't know if it's because like there's a ton like everybody's using psn now and there aren't as many people on xbox one or xbox live i wonder is the xbox live count both 360 and xbox one like active players like online or is it just xbox one like when they show the the, uh, the tally up of the numbers i'll have to look into that maybe that's something i'll put in the descriptions as well um but i guess as far as my level of happiness with the xbox one i if i have to put a number on it i i guess i would go with a four out of five no, let's do, I'll do 8 out of 10. There we go. And uh, reasons being, because, I mean, a 10 is like, there's it's perfect. There's nothing wrong with it. Everything works like it should. Um, you know, an 8, because, I mean, ugh, that Forest Connect, when I bought it, that was, that's ridiculous. Um, but now you can buy it without, so. Um, the interface, I got to do something about that. But everything else on, on the console, I like. Uh the online play is pretty good. Uh, the controller, I love the controller. I still, for whatever reason, I can't get used to the PS4 or PlayStation controllers. PS3 controller is not my thing. Um, and the PS4 is a step up from that, but it's still kind of like, because I'm so used to the Xbox One controller. It doesn't take me long to get used to the PS4 controller. Like if I'm going from PS4 games to um, Xbox One games, like especially if I'm playing Call of Duty, um, because I play it on both consoles. It doesn't take me very long to get used to it, but it just doesn't feel as good on, on PS4, so i much rather just prefer the Xbox One controller. I, I heard that people didn't like the Xbox One controller, but, I mean, I don't know. I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I think the stick layout is a lot better, uh, but then again, that's because I've been playing first-person shooters on the Xbox One a lot longer than I have on the PlayStation, so... I guess, but yeah, I guess that's it. Uh, level of happiness, 8 out of 10. Uh, I'm looking forward to all the new features that are coming for the Xbox One. The uh, backwards compatibility, I think, is a very good business decision by Xbox to sell more consoles um, because they're clearly getting the crap kicked out of them <laughs> in, uh, in sales. So, um, yeah, they need to do everything that they can to try and pump out more consoles. Um, I think they'll do pretty good this holiday. I, in a way, I'm kind of glad that they're trailing because you get a lot more for your buck when uh, when you're trying to compete. So that's a good thing. The consumer wins when that happens. Um, consumer is kind of losing on that end for PlayStation because there isn't crap coming out um, as far as exclusive games for reasons why you bought your PS4. There aren't a whole lot of uh, good reasons why you bought your PS4 right now. Um, because they are winning ps4 i mean the psn needs a buff big time uh the maintenance thing my gosh like i, I mean where are all the consoles being sold at i i assume it's in america because we buy everything i, I know they're they sell a lot of numbers in um japan but i know the gaming market in japan is kind of falling off because of uh mobile but really need to uh i don't know really need to fix those maintenance times scheduling uh what else i don't know i'll make another video for that anyways um thanks for watching if you guys are enjoying the videos don't forget to hit the like button subscribe for more videos uh i've got a podcast coming out every week it's gonna be a weekly thing gonna be up on itunes pretty soon but it'll be here on youtube for the meanwhile but i'll catch you guys for the next one